Springtime is an exciting time on board the Steamship Shieldle, and I'm not just talking about the fact that the weather gets warmer. All of us on board apply the final bits of paint, put the engines back together, and fire up the boilers for the first time in preparation for our upcoming sailing season. But like any other vessel, there is the law of the sea that must be followed. So join us now as we take a look at only some of the training that we as the crew of the Steamship Shield Hall undertake to guarantee the protection of the environment, the ship itself, the crew, and of course, our guests on board. For exercise, for exercise. All teams and passengers proceed to your emergency master stations. We've got a crew alert. We've got to go to master stations. So we are going to master station B. Within the crew uh, function, uh, fire reported. Hi, my name's Ian Bourne. I am part of the bridge team and I'm one of the captains. We train for four reasons. One, it's the safety of our own team, the crew and the volunteers. It's the safety of the passengers. It's for the safety of the vessel. And also, very importantly, it's for the safety of the environment around us. My name is Stuart Bannerman and today I was performing the role of purser on the ship. As purser today, my responsibility was the safety and comfort of the passengers. So when we were told that there was an emergency situation, I and my team gathered the passengers in a safe place at a muster point and ensured that nobody was missing, searched the rest of the ship to, to ensure that nobody was hidden away, and then reassured passengers and kept them informed of the situation. So as the uh, training director here, it's my role to make sure we get uh, enough level of training in the right topics to everybody. So what we teach is uh, some, some classroom type stuff where we're looking at theory of how things operate, how we, uh, we're going through the emergency procedures, uh, rehearsing them within that classroom environment. We then get out, uh, get out on deck and in the end room and in the spaces and we conduct those drills then for real. So we will uh, set up uh, scenarios for fire, for example, getting a person out of a confined space, setting up a casualty to get them uh, sent ashore, either from a boat or from a helicopter. We actually run those drills uh, using all the equipment for real and uh, rehearsing it as if it was actually happening. Fire in the forecastle has now spread and increasing. Hey, yeah, I'm Maria Jensen and I'm in the engine room and we did drills today. During today's drill, we did how to deal with when there was a fire on board, where to muster, and how to deal with the issue. I'm finding the online training really easy. It's very um, detailed, and um, that goes through more like what to deal with fires, what they are, how you would deal with that, and if there's like confined spaces, you've got an accident in there, what to do and what to look out for. Um, I've learned about how to put on a life jacket and how to put it on other people. I learned about the life rafts, um, how to deploy those, what kind of extinguishers to use on certain fires given the situation. What we have to do, we have 13 emergency procedures that we train for on the Shield Hall, from collision, grounding, oil pollution, medical casivac, uh, man overboard, whatever. And we have to rehearse all those scenarios. And very often they can come in, in they're not in isolation. We may have to uh, rehearse, for example, the grounding followed by an abandoned ship or what have you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a fire in the forecastle which the emergency party is dealing with. So we have to rehearse these so that should we ever get into a scenario where for real, then people don't have to think they can just do. Uh, and that's really critical, especially when you're mindful of the fact we carry 200 passengers on here who don't have that training and drill, and we need to manage them as well as our own team. So it's all about understanding the, the risks and the challenges, how to operate efficiently, where our equipment is, how to use it, who does what, how do the teams interact, and so on. I'm Dan Nutman, I'm one of the volunteer engineers on board the Shield Hall and I've been volunteering on the ship for about six years. I've started to work in a maritime in a professional background. I've done the firefighting course so I was actually assigned that I was one of the people who could put on the BA firefighting set. So if there is a fire, I would be potentially one of the people who have to go in and fight the fire. Today we were basically just doing a simulation drill as to what we should do if we were assigned that role during the sailing on board. Before we do any drill it's very important that everyone knows what they're doing and where they are so you don't get confusion. Everyone's briefed that we're going to assign each person so today you're doing this role you're doing that role 
and then we would then proceed as to what we would do in the normal procedure, which we would then do in real life. The emergency team then proceed in their various roles to resolve the situation in the case of a fire. The BA wearers and the BA assisters and the BA control, who is a person in charge and make sure the whole operation runs smoothly, we then go to put on our suits, make sure our suits are put on correctly, and then we will then proceed to simulate putting out a fire in accordance with the prescribed firefighting procedures on board. For exercise, for exercise, abandon ship, abandon ship. My name's Chris Wilkinson, I'm part of the Shield All crew. Gangway and mooring training is important. Clearly we need to get the passengers on board the Shield All in a safe manner. We also need to make sure that the gangway is deployed in a safe manner to protect the crew and the environment. We are held accountable for gangway and mooring training, really by two bodies. You've got the, the ship, the ship's master, the shieldles master, and the docks board. Both have our own set of protocols, and we adhere to the highest set of safety protocols uh, between the two. So our training is approved by the MCA, or the um, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. So this is the uh, government authority that is responsible for maintaining the, the, the safety and standards uh, of certification and competencies of all vessels that are registered in the UK. Uh, and so that's who we are uh, responsible to. Uh, when we've done our training, we'll, we'll invite them down and they'll spend a day with us and they will put us through our paces. They want to check that we have the right equipment in place, it's operational, it's being tested, uh, we have to test a lot of our equipment on an annual basis. And then they will run some drills and uh, training with us they will task individuals and, and check that they know their, know their stuff. Uh, and it's a tough old day. But at the end of that, provided we meet the standard, and you either meet it or you don't. There's, there are no prizes for second in this game. If we meet it, which we, we will, then we will be issued with a passenger carrying certificate, and then the Shield Hall can operate for the season. My name's Dave, and I'm one of the bosuns on board the Shield Hall. Uh, safety meetings, uh, one of the main priorities would be to get the crew up to an MCA standard to alleviate any accidents. We've got to look out for those all the time. There's a quite professional aspect that we need to meet. Although we're a volunteer crew, we like to think that we're quite a good high standard of safety that we meet. Looking out for our own safety, looking out for passenger safety, making sure that the gangway works properly, uh, the safety boat works properly. All these things, they've all got to be looked after and it's uh, all done within the realms of the safety meetings. One of the things that we've done recently, we've changed one of the vertical ladders up in the forecastle. Uh, a lot of footfall where there's lockers and things down below, just to keep it safe instead of people having to go up and down the vertical ladder each time. They've got a nice stairway with handrails so they can negate the passage safely. If at any time the person on the winch wants a break, just shout, there's plenty of people watching. <laughs> it's interesting to look back over the years to see how training has, ch uh, training has changed. Which tra it's changed in two aspects. One is the way we deliver it and the other is what we deliver. So in terms of the way we deliver it, we still do the ch chalk and talk and the getting out on deck and into the engine room and doing stuff. But also we, we have online training as well. So we have online training courses covering all the safety equipment, uh, how, how we operate in different uh, emergency procedures. So that's reinforcement training and we, we, ins we insist that everybody, as well as doing a minimum number of live training sessions, also cover, go through the online training. But the content's changed as well. It's changed because the industry, the profession, is learning all the time about how to be more efficient, how to be safer and how to, how to eliminate more risk. So as well as operating the ship itself and the emergency procedures, we, for example, uh, run a course on a safe mooring practice. This means that as a ship we can actually operate our own mooring team. Uh, but to do that we had to convince the shore authorities, we understand the risks and we mitigate them and we operate in a safe manner. Proceed uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the saloon and we will do a debrief, thank you. So the question now is, what happens next? Well, for us, the crew, we have much more training to do to ensure we meet the MCA standard and get that certification. But for you guys at home, what's coming next is much more content. Coming up this year, we have got much more video content from on board the Steamship Shield Hall to keep you guys posted with what's happening on board the ship. This includes maintenance updates, the dry dock, special events on board, and we've got our own mini documentary mini series called View From The Decks, a look at local history that we can see from the deck of the Steamship Shield Hall.
If any of that interests you guys at home, then please do hit that subscribe button we're gonna leave there. We'll also put a video up here for you guys to watch next. My name's Will, and on behalf of the entire Steamship Shield Hall charity, thank you for watching, and we hope to welcome you on board soon.